Shalom, saints. We greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for this day, for the very breath in our body. We'd like to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, reading at verse 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. May the Lord let his blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Dear God and Heavenly Father, we realize it takes a wise man to seek after Jesus. And they came from the east because they saw a sign. They saw a star. And they knew that he was king because they've come to worship him. Lord, help us this morning to recognize who Jesus is. He was the most important figure in human history. Bless us, Lord, this morning to understand a little bit about him, for we ask it in Jesus' name. More than 2,000 years ago, there was a man born contrary to the laws of life. This man lived in poverty and was reared in obscurity. He did not travel extensively. Only once did he cross the boundary of the country in which he lived. That was during his exile in childhood. He possessed neither wealth nor influence. His relatives were inconspicuous and had neither training nor formal education. In infancy, he startled the king. In childhood, he puzzled the doctors. In manhood, he ruled the course of nature, walked upon the waves as payment, and hushed the sea to sleep. He healed the multitude without medicine and made no charge for his service. He never wrote a book, and yet perhaps all the libraries of the world could not hold the books that have been written about him. He never wrote a song, and yet he has furnished a theme for more songs than all the songwriters combined. He never founded a college, but all the schools put together cannot boast of having as many students. He never marshaled an army, nor drafted a soldier, nor fired a gun. Yet no leader ever had more volunteers who have under his orders made more rebels stack arms and surrender without a shot being fired. He never practiced psychiatry, and yet he has healed more broken hearts than all the doctors far and wide. The names of the past proud statements of Greece and Rome have come and gone. The names of past scientists, philosophers and theologians have come and gone. But the name of this man multiplies more and more. Though time has spread 2,000 years between the people of this generation and mockers at his crucifixion, he still lives. His enemies could not destroy him, and the grave could not hold him. He stands forth upon the highest pinnacle of heavenly glory, proclaimed of God, acknowledged by angels, adored by saints, and feared by devils as the risen, personal Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's nobody like him. There never has been, and there never will be. All history knew it was about to happen. All humanity had been waiting for the advent that would forever divide all human destiny. Yet few, even among the eight million Jews of that day, knew the significance of the 333 prophecies 
of the promise. The 14 detailed predictions of just his birth that were to be fulfilled so minutely on that religious day. <clears throat> but only a few devout shepherds in a field heard a midnight chorus from another world. But the facts are there. All time and history flowed inexorably together to find the culmination in a dry bed of straw in an obscure little town called Bethlehem. To a remote corner far from the center of the world ruled and dignity. To a hungry, hoping humanity like ours, sick of war. The Word of God says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was like this. When his mother was engaged to Joseph, before they came together, he was found with the child of the Holy Spirit. No one was ever born like Jesus. He is unprecedented and unparalleled in history. The first and only child born without a human father. The Bible says, A virgin shall conceive and be a child. Isaiah 7.17 And you shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. The Lord had created a new thing on the earth. A woman shall produce cause to come about, to make a man. Jeremiah 31, 22 says, For unto us a child is born, humanity. Unto us a son is given, divinity, said Isaiah. And the government shall be on his shoulder, as his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Long, long before, at the dawn of our race, a man stood up without father and mother, fresh created from the hand of this God. We call him Adam. Now in a visit that split history in two, around its advent came another, whose origin was even more marvelous. Not the second, but the last Adam. The creator, God himself, entering his own creation. But it in a hundred ancient legends of a God-man who would come to bless the world is the reality of the oldest prophecy. The seed of a woman would be born in due time, Genesis 3.15. Matthew's careful account lists. You find biology refers to the seed of men, but the word of God says the seed of the woman. Now, each time Matthew says, begets 39 times. Stopping to note that Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus. Luke points out, Jesus was, as it was supposed, Joseph's son. A phrase referring to custom or legal standing or adopted. Luke's, Luke records Mary's lineage. She too was in the royal line, as his real mother bore him as the rightful ruler of Israel. We find from Mary through humanity, all the way back to Adam, from God, his father, through deity, all the way back to eternity. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1.14 No one ever spoke like Jesus. This Jesus of Nazareth, without money and arms, conquered more millions than Alexander, Caesar, Mohammed and Napoleon together. Without science and learning, he shed more light on things human and divine than all the philosophers and scholars combined. Without the eloquence of schools, he spoke such words of life as were never spoken before or since. And he produced more effects which lie beyond the reach of the orator or poet. Without writing a single line, he set more pens in motion and furnished themes for more sermons 
of relations, discussions, learned volumes, works of art and songs of praise, and the whole army of men of ancient and modern times. The people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Matthew 7, 28. When the disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed. They were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. The common people heard him gladly, Mark 12, 37. Never spoke a man like this man, John 7, 46. The Sermon on the Mount, the parables, the Lord's Prayer, the Great Commandments, the prodigal son, the lost sheep, the good Samaritan, the Pharisee and the publican, any of these would do honor to any book in the world. A power and simplicity of the highest genius without equal or rival. Did any Christians of taste and education compose these and ascribe them to Christ? They could not do it. Then from where came this wisdom? If Christ were merely some peasant carpenter, listen to his own words, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will never pass away. Luke 21, 33. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. He that hears my word and believes on and him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life, John 5, 24. If any man will do his will, he shall know the scripture, whether it be of God or I speak myself. If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. And whosoever shall be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and his fathers and the holy angels. I say unto you, Jesus says, I say unto you, resist not evil. I say unto you, love your enemies. You shall love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the, all the law and the prophets. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Friends, Jesus was the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. His claims, his words, his warnings are meant, ringing with authority and majesty. Never did a man indeed speak like Jesus did to all audiences, curious, hostile, or adoring, without apparent deliberation or premeditation, without moments hesitation or uncertainty. He answers them all. Critics, lawyers, debaters, religious specialists, scoffers, masterfully convincing they are mad with rage, impotent dismissing their carefully planned tricks and seconds. Study the incidents of the woman taking an adultery, the lawyer with his query in eternal life, the chief priest in authority, the Pharisee's taxation trap. Are these answers of a mere man? Truly, Jesus was more than a man. He was God in human flesh. Friends, He can come and live in your heart. He can give you the peace that passeth all human understanding. To know Him is life. Shall we pray? Father, we appreciate you. We realize Jesus was no ordinary man. It was God in human flesh. And Lord, we understand you want to come and live in us like you lived in Jesus Christ. We'd like to surrender that your Holy Spirit may break every fetter, remove every evil spirit, every evil desire, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Bless us, Lord. Bless this day. Let there be a change in our lives as we yield and surrender to you that your word may be born in our hearts. Bless us, for we ask it in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you, saints. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.